It didn't seem too long ago that there was a lot of discussion online about the concept of gaslighting. So the internet being what it is, of course there was a movie about it shortly after. Very quickly, if you are new here, I like to cover those movies that seem to get less talked about or less reviewed. Just try and find a few hidden gems for myself and recommend on to you guys. So if you haven't yet, please do hit subscribe, it really does help out the channel. But that being said, let's get on with the review. Gaslight. So I've definitely got a few thoughts on this movie and I'll walk you through them. The movie opens with a man who's getting arrested for murder. Now he claims he didn't do it and with the setup, the scenario, it's quite clear that he didn't but he's getting arrested for it anyway. But I do want to take just a moment out and just say what the fuck happened to this gavel hit? Like she is going to town with that gavel like it's one of those fucking squeaky toys you used to hit your pals with. Like surely being a judge that should be part of the test. Now this movie opening did confuse me a little bit because after it we're following Brooke and she is the main of this movie. So her dad has passed away and left her a shit ton of money. And because we just kind of jumped to her in this scenario I thought that her dad would have been the dad from the introduction of the movie. Not the case. It's relevant but it'll come in way later in the film. Now what drives this movie and is clearly the central focus is Brooke has now got a lot of money. A lot of people are talking poison into her ears so it's hard for her to make out the truth from fiction in this film. That is very interesting and I will take my hat off and a lot of times in this movie it done it very fucking well. It just put in Brooke in the center of everything that's happening around her because Brooke for the most part doesn't do much in this movie. It's the people around her that are the moving players in this and Brooke is just the one having to deal with it. So whilst you've got Brooke in the center you've got her husband, you've got her best friend and you also have her therapist. So they're all navigating around her and talking to Brooke about the other players as well, more as the movie goes on and certainly as events unfold. This all starts with her husband just starts spending the money. Now they're both allowed access to it. He's like one of these musicians that has an album coming out for like 10 years, so he buys a new studio and he's working away on this. Brooke understandably is not very happy about it, but it's within the conversation when she confronts him or confronts really anybody, but you see it at the start. He starts gaslighting her. And if you're not familiar with gaslighting, it's hard to describe, but my take on it would be if you're trying to confront someone Somebody. They kind of flip it back onto you so when you leave the conversation you feel like it's you to blame. That's my very simple explanation of it. And it's these conversations that carry the movie because you don't really know where the other people are coming from. You don't know if they're telling the truth or what their best interest is. And she was given a year off of work since her dad's passing. And I'll be honest, her workplace, it was great to see. It looks like she's got the best boss and employees because whilst her personal life is just falling away throughout this movie, when she's back in the office it feels like a moment to breathe. Everybody around her is very supportive and Nobody's trying to fuck with her in work. But with her returning early, her husband's not a fan of it and again has a conversation around kind of flipping it on her to make her feel bad about going back to work. No, she doesn't need to. She's got more than enough money now to support both of them. But she goes back anyway. And then we start seeing large chunks of money coming out of her account. Her husband denies it. And then suspicions and cracks start showing. And it's from this point on in the movie that you don't know who to trust. She'll talk to this about her therapist. Then also her best friend. And each of these players will talk about the other characters in the movie and try and make Brooke doubt everybody else but themselves. You know, all three characters are putting themselves on pedestals and trying to knock down the others. And it just leaves Brooke in a position of trying to sift through all this and understand who does have the best intention and who is looking out for her. And the movie does correctly advise that everybody has their demons. So when the characters are talking about the others, they've all done something in their past, something that they, they, they can kind of use as a base for their lies to add on to. And you do really feel for Brooke in this scenario. It's understandable it's tough to watch because it's a real life thing it does happen to people and that's why I take my hat off to that element of the movie because these conversations they do feel real and definitely the way they end also feels very believable as well that it does feel though like most people in this movie kind of mic drop her at the end of the conversation because she's left with nothing to say and just has to contemplate everything that she just heard however my gripes with this movie are that it doesn't really have an arc and it is quite upsetting to see that in something all about gaslighting and somebody trying to sift through and get to the truth, maybe get a bit more self-confidence on pushing back in conversations or, or even just having a better understanding of the people she surrounds herself with. But for a movie that's all about the psychological and it's all about the conversations, it takes a huge right turn into like an action ending to the film. You know, it ramps up the stakes, there's no denying that, but there was no need for the physicality at the end for a movie that's so well done and based itself on the conversations and kind of the emotional side of things. Whilst the introduction to this movie was very dramatic and I said it does feed into the film later on, it didn't need to. The reason for the introduction was 
videos to kind of provide a little bit more subtext and information for an aspect later in the film. However, that bit later in the movie could have been done in a number of ways. A number of ways that were kind of already taking place in the movie, you know, with characters finding new information out anyway. So they didn't need to have this man falsely go to prison to then kind of come back into the movie later. He is only in it very briefly and he feeds like the first breadcrumb, if you will, for a character to then follow the rest of them. It almost feels like when they wrote this movie, they just had such a really good concept of gaslighting and, and there was great scenes written and great dialogue written. But then when they tried to bookend the movie and understand how to wrap everything up, they fucking had nothing. So they just made this kind of action ending. And look, without going into the specifics, because they moved it into this action side of things, the character's arc of gaslighting, it never came full circle. It just felt like she was back at square one. Her life was a little bit different, but not different in any kind of emotional state. You know, there's nothing that alluded to a lesson learned or some new way of moving forward in life. And that is a real shame because this movie had something. Where would I be putting Gaslight? If you have nothing else to watch, put it on. The good like 50 minutes and definitely the first and second act of the movie are really good. As long as you're okay with a right turn that just absolutely deviates from what you've had set up in the movie. And when I say that, I mean the tone of the movie just completely shifts. Narratively, it makes sense and I understand where it's went and it's all kind of been set up. So that's fine. But look, if you've got nothing else to watch and you're okay with a tone shift, put on Gaslight. That was just some of my thoughts. Have you seen Gaslight? If you have, let me know down below if we agree or disagree. And if you have made it this far, please do hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching.